The NBA playoffs are right around the corner. What's up, everybody? This is Kerry. In this video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to scrape NBA data from a very popular website called basketballreference.com. When we do this, we need two pieces of information. One is a URL where we're going to scrape the data. The other one is a table ID that contains the data that we want to scrape. Let's look at the actual website here. Here is the website. This contains the table that we want to scrape. This particular table is for the Atlanta Hawks. They're the first team alphabetically on this website. And if you look at this table, if you look at the upper left-hand corner, we right-click on that and click on Inspect. When we do that, then we notice over here in the Developer Tools that we have a table ID right over here of TGL underscore basic. I'm assuming that means Team Game Log Basic. But here we have the URL at the top, and we have the table ID right here in the middle. Now notice in this particular table, unlike the NFL data, it only has 16 games. There's 82 games in the NBA. So when we look at this table, row one here actually contains the headings that we want for our data frame. But down below after game 20, there is an actual another header in here. And that's the kind of stuff we want to get rid of. So when we look at the Python code and look at what we're going to do here, we're going to remove those individual rows. And now that the NBA season is over, the regular season, we have 82 games. So we're going to scrape 82 games for every single team. We're going to do that for the last 10 years. Let's look at the code. Okay, here is the Python code to scrape this data from the website we just looked at. As always, in the top cell here, we're going to import the libraries, NumPy, Pandas, Random, and Time. Now, the second cell here contains a list of team abbreviations. This is for the NBA. And we see here Atlanta, Boston, Brooklyn, and so on. These are the three-letter codes that the website uses to separate the different teams' pages. Next one down here is the seasons that we're going to scrape. We're going to scrape from 2014 to 2023, the current year, and has 10 seasons. Now, we have the list of stats that are in this table. The field goals made, the field goals attempted, field goal percentage, and so on, all the way down to steals, blocks, turnovers, and personal fouls. And this particular dictionary right here is going to allow us to separate the team data from their opponent data. So when we put the team underscore in front of the stat, that's going to be the offensive stats for that particular team like the Atlanta Hawks. Because of the way Pandas reads the tables, if there are two columns that have the same name, it puts a column name dot one. So what we're going to do is replace the dot one with opponent, OPP underscore, that indicates in the far right hand part of that table, the opponent stats. That would actually represent the defensive stats for the same team for the Atlanta Hawks. Let's run that code here. Okay. Now here is the main cell. In this case, we create an NBA data frame that we're going to pin to. We're going to iterate through the season, so 2014, 2015, and so on. And then for each season, we're going to iterate through the teams, Atlanta, Boston, Brooklyn. And this is where we use the URL. This is www.basketballreference.com slash team slash team, ATL for Atlanta, slash season 2014 for the first season, and so on, slash game log. So that's going to adjust for every single season for every single team. We're going to go through the seasons and then for each season through each team. I print the URL right here because I'd like to see the progress while the data is being scraped. I'd like to see which team and which year are currently on. Now down here, we have the team data frame. This is the web scraping. Like I said before, this is the star of the show, pd.readhtml. We supply the URL. Now we know that the header is in row one. And here's where we set the attributes. The ID is going to be TGL underscore basic. That is the table that we want to scrape for this team for this season. And because Pandas Read HTML returns a list of tables, at the very, very end of this, we have to put bracket zero to get the first table in that list. Now, there's only going to be one table in this list, but that's the table we want. And that's the first table. So bracket zero is what we use. Okay. Now, this is where I talked about we're going to drop the actual rows that have the rank. Now, this is where I, I specify a particular column here, RK for rank. And what this is essentially doing is just keeping those rows where the rank is not empty and where the rank is numeric. Some of those had the extra header there, RK. Well, we don't want that one because that's the header row again. We don't want that because that's the same header row that's, that's just repeated. So this removes those rows in that table that don't contain data. There's a couple columns here that are blank. We're going to drop those. We're going to drop the RK column now because we don't need it. We're also going to drop a column that is essentially blank, unnamed 24. Now here is where we rename some columns. Some of these columns we want. In unnamed column three, we have the home. The team column is actually the point scored by the given team like the Atlanta Hawks. And opponent dot one is actually the opponent points. So we're going to rename those columns. Now we're going to use this Team Stats Dictionary and Opponent Dictionary 
to separate these stats from team to opponent. And so that's why we do the following two lines here. We're going to rename the columns that have the stats to team underscore stats. And then we're going to rename the columns that have the same stats dot one to the opponent stats. In this next statement here, we're going to take that home column where it has the at symbol in blanks. If it's the at symbol, then home is zero. That means it's an away game. If there's no symbol in there at all, then it's a one. That means it's a home game. Then we're going to insert the current season and team in the first two columns. The reason we do this is because when we're on that particular website, we see, for example, 2023 Atlanta Hawks. It doesn't include the season because that's on that page. We're going to make sure that the season and the team code are the first two columns in our data frame. Then when we're done with the team data frame, we're going to add that to our NBA data frame by calling pd.concat. Ignore index equals true. So this gives us our NBA data frame. Now, after we scrape this particular team for this particular season, we have to pause our code. The website only allows us to scrape data. The website only allows us to scrape data 20 times per minute. So by pausing our code between four to six seconds, we're going to make sure that we don't overstep those boundaries. This is what it looks like when you scrape. You can see it just did the Atlanta Hawks 2014, the Boston Celtics for 2014, the Brooklyn Nets for 2014, and so on. Now, I've already done this. I'm not going to redo it. I like to go ahead and print what we have. I didn't scrape the entire web page. So when we look at this, we see the season here, Atlanta Hawks, date, and so on. The opposing team, win-loss, W or L. The team points, the opponent points, the team field goals, and so on. The opponent free throws, and so on, until we get down to the opponent personal fouls. So we have a total of 41 columns in our data frame. We're going to have many more rows than that. In fact, we have 30 teams, 82 games per season, and 10 seasons. That's 24,600 rows. Now, make sure you're very careful to do this last step here. Once you're done scraping all that data and you have it in a data frame, save that data frame to your CSV file. And I name my CSV file NBA Game Logs 2014 to 2023 and make sure you set index equals false. That way that first column is not the index set. And that's it. I hope you liked this video and got some value from it. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I'm looking forward to digging into this data set and trying to find some patterns and trends for the NBA games and NBA playoffs. See you in the next video.